rock any boats, you know, oh, me rocking. Okay, boats. we're live. live. Yeah, okay, good. Good morning, everybody. Sacred Sunday blessings, bright beings of light. Um, I know you're bright beings of light out there because <laughs> we are all bright beings of light and you are no exception to that. So I got my phone. I always have my phone on Sunday morning and this way I can connect with you when we go live on our um, when we stream live on our Facebook page, Brentwood Inspired Living Center, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And so when you get to our live feed, let me know that you're here. I'm still looking for us, but I will find you very, very soon. It is a miraculous day to be together for our Sunday morning Facebook live. And I think I've got us right here. Yes, I have found us. Yay. Good morning, Jenny. Welcome in, everybody. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ's light shining in you. We see you. Jenny says, looks like a great lineup today. Yes, it is. And a great lineup on the screen and a great lineup in the chat. Everybody who's joining us. Uh, thank you for being here with us. We appreciate you. Good morning, David Miller. He says, good morning from San Ramon. Yay. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome in. Welcome in, beloveds. Welcome, welcome. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I am honored. I am blessed to be the spiritual director here at this phenomenal, incredible, loving community, Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Um, a dear friend to our community used to say all the time, uh, good morning, fellow pilgrims. And I mm -hmm. always loved that when Don said that. I appreciated it because we are pilgrims journeying together to a sacred place. And uh, this is the place, the space here in consciousness. So thank you, pilgrims, for journeying here with us this morning. We journey in all kinds of ways these days. These days, we journey through technology waves. <laughs> it's very fascinating, all the things that we can do now. Um, going from Zoom to Facebook, and then you're here on Facebook with us here through the phone, and oh, mind-blowing. Hi, Maria. Good morning. Welcome in. When you get here, let me know you're here with a comment or um, something in the chat so I can see you and recognize you and love you. Our theme for October has been identity check, and what a rich topic <laughs> it has been. Uh, you know, this idea about identity, um, you know, is, is how we run our lives. It's often just based on, you know, what we have or what we do or what others think of me, or it, it's just as often this, this separate thought that we're separate from everyone else. Also like feeling separated from um, what we want to experience or separate from God's source. And so in all of these uh, ways of identifying, uh, we can crumble, we can destroy our ability to really experience our true identity our true identity. And so that's a big reason why our center, Brentwood Inspired Living Center exists. It's our purpose to be a safe environment for everyone to come here and recognize their true essence and step into the greatness of your divine design, um, you know, and to get the opportunity to tune into the power and presence that is available as your source all the time. Um, a space where we can be reminded to open our hearts and minds to receive the divine download uh, so that we can go out and shine those lights and, and share with the world. So thank you for being on this mission with us. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful to be together. I am thrilled to welcome back Father Tom Benacci today. We are always so grateful to have this amazing soul with us. Um, sharing his luminosity, his peace, his wisdom, his gentleness. Tom's message today is, who are you? Hmm, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> also plan to tune into the Zoom workshop. That's at 1130. That's on our, um, our website, our homepage of our website, brentwoodilc.org. And you'll see the link there. Just pop in there. And I'll also drop it in this Facebook feed in the chat when we complete here this morning and you can pop in there at 1130 to 1230, we will be having dialogue about the possibility project. We, we began that we're continuing the conversation. It's, um, it's amazing. It's rich. It's, it's full. So come join us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, we are blessed to have the fabulous musician, John Shin with us. 
bringing us his essence and presence and love and tunes. Thank you, John. And we have the amazing Pat McCulley. She's here to share our inspirational reading and our message of abundance with us this morning. So thank you, um, the three of you here joining us and all of you joining us. We welcome you in with hugs and love and um, lots of joy, lots of joy. This is a joy-filled space. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted to have this spectacular souls with us and equally thrilled to have you here with us. Good morning, Katie. Katie says, good morning, loving community. Uh, good morning, loving Katie. Bonnie says, good morning, great morning from Bonnie and Robin. Good morning, Bonnie and Robin. Welcome in, beloved souls. Thank you. How is everybody doing? How is everybody holding the high watch in the world, being the, the light workers? Um, love prevails when we choose love. <laughs> That's something I always say myself. Love prevails when we choose love. <laughs> so welcome in beautiful beings. We're so glad to join together. Um, please um, like our page, Brentwood Inspired Living Center. And, and you can also go to notifications and turn them on and then you'll get the little ping on Sunday morning when we go live. And that way you don't have to search for us. You can just pop right in. That's helpful. If you feel up to leaving us a review on Facebook or on Google, uh, we appreciate that. Let's other people know who we are and what we're all about gets get they get to hear you know in your words about our center so that's helpful too good morning florence welcome in thank you for joining us everybody i'm thankful for your presence i'm thankful for uh being on this pilgrimage together <laughs> hi michael j allen welcome in uh, we have supportive informative transformative weekly small groups going on some of them are on zoom some of them are in person you can find all that out on our website brentwoodilc.org under the connect tab and then discussion groups you can find actually everything out about us on our website brentwoodilc.org anything you need to know whether it's um you our archived talks from the past or what's coming up or events everything is there um, our, our Sunday concerts, um, our in-person services. So anything you'd like to know, uh, go ahead and visit our website. It, it will be there. Um, welcome everyone. Oh, happy day with Tom, John, Pat, and of course, Amy. Good morning. So somebody's coming in on Brentwood Inspired Living Center. That would be Dave or Kathy or Jan, because <laughs> we're all admins on our page. <laughs> So good morning, Michael Allen says, great morning, peace and blessings, peace and blessings, dear Michael Allen, thank you, thank you for being here, blessing us with your presence. Oh, okay, well, let's get started, I'm going to keep my phone right here close to my heart, and that's where I see you and keep connecting with you throughout the morning, um, and we're going to open up with our mission statement, so I invite you to Feel into this, activate this, energize this, hand on heart, however you do that, open your heart space and feel. We are an open, heart-centered spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. Thank you for being on this mission with us. I'm going to turn the screen over to Pat now for our, no, I'm sorry. I'm skipping ahead. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. We are, I'm going to turn the screen over to John for our community song this morning, which is so important. I just got finished talking about how I'm so appreciative of our music aspect of our service. <laughs> how it is such a, it's, it's so important that we have this soul time to, to sing because it opens our heart space. It opens our throat chakra and it's just, it's energy moving. So it's actually going to John for our community song. So sing along at home. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you.
they'll know that we are family by our love. We will walk this path together. is one of my favorites. I think that's one of all of our favorites. <laughs> Somebody just texted me about my glasses. Okay, so it's time for glasses for me more regularly. And I don't know if this is a thing, but some days are worse than others. Is that what happens? <laughs> I don't really know. But it's a day where I need glasses. That's why I have them on. <laughs> Uh, so thank you, John. That was beautiful. Thank you everybody for joining us. I see Jennifer. She says, wishing everyone another blessed day of discovery on your journey. Luinda says, hi, everyone. Had a little hard time finding you this morning for some reason. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it. Uh, welcome in everybody. Okay. I'm going to hand the screen over to Pat now for our inspirational reading this morning. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I can't see you, but you can see me. Uh, my name is Pat McCulley. Uh, this month, our theme is Identity Check. And the reading this morning is called Halloween and Identity by Pat McCulley. It's synchronistic, isn't it? For many adults and children have been thinking about identity this whole month. Tomorrow is Halloween and thoughts have been about costumes and masks. It's a life challenge to not let costumes and masks of the Halloween take over our whole life. Humorously, I like to think of every day as Halloween because some of us identify with our costumes and masks and never take them off. Our costumes include our I am statements when we solely identify as a certain profession or woman, man, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, the masks we wear lead us to thoughts and actions, covering up our fears of non-acceptance, of unworthiness, of loneliness. Carl Jung states, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. Costumes and masks are our outer identities. To awaken is to discover our inner identity. Some don't have a desire to awaken. This is their path in their lifetime. There's no judgment there. We all have our own timing as our soul dictates. The outer is captivating, seemingly with instant gratification for status, power, fame, and money. Some TV ads lately have featured slogans about wanting security. The internet is rife, offering help to those thinking their identity has been stolen. If we decide we want to awaken, are we willing to look inside and surrender our outer costumes and masks? What would be the new focus? Contemplation and meditation about who am I? What is my essence? We can discover we are 
a part of the infinite. We are miracles. We are beings of light and love. What is the gift we receive when we find these answers for ourselves? Our consciousness moves from thoughts to feelings. Dr. Davis Hawkins' chart of consciousness shows that feeling is a higher state of being than thinking. And what is the gift from this higher state of being? Feelings of being at home with ourselves, loving who we are just as we are. Feelings of oneness with other people. Intuiting there is a learning in every situation. Sensing that all is in divine order and divine timing. We can be enveloped in, in inner peace and joy no matter what happens in life. We have many costumes and many masks. So when this October 31st is over tomorrow, let's not only take off our outer fun costumes, but challenge ourselves to take off one of our inner costumes or masks. Look inside and you will awaken to what is yours to release. And with a release, there is a void that can be filled when you ask and start to manifest what is your soul truly desiring. Identity check. The inner always rules the outer. Look within and your spirit soars. Thank you. Words of wisdom by Pat McCulley. Thank you, Pat. Good reminders. And I like that. I like that. Um, taking the costumes and the masks off after Halloween and taking them all, stripping down. It's very vulnerable. It can be very vulnerable, right? To, to really, to be in that space. And yet so much emerges from that. Some of the words you use, intuition, sensing, enveloped. I felt that. Thank you. Thank you for you. Okay, I'm turning it back to John for our next song this morning. Thank you, John. And thank you, Pat. Thank you, Amy. Uh, this is a song that came to me when I was doing a bit of an identity check. See if it works for you. I am shining light is guiding me I am present with the past all that is and yet to be I am spirit I am spirit I am purpose yes I am source of all, in alignment with the plan, answering the bugle's call, I am purpose, I am purpose, I am peaceful, yes I am, I see God in
so beautiful, so centering, so grounding. Much appreciation and love. Thank you, John. Okay, Pat, it's all yours. Uh, prayer of plentitude. You're still muted, love. I have to mute myself because sometimes I sing along with John and I didn't want you all to hear me. <laughs> oh, good morning, my friends. I invite you to join me now for our prayer of plentitude as we welcome and receive the glorious abundance today and every day. Take a deep breath, breathing in love and light. Hold it gently. Now release it slowly as you connect through your heart with our message of prosperity. We come together today, opening our hearts and minds to the one spirit, the light, infinite mind, knowing that there is only one power and one life, and that is the life of spirit. We affirm that we are one with spirit, and there is no one, nothing, that is separate from this oneness. We are one with that infinite mind that has created all that is. We know that the divine qualities of peace, of power, of plenty of wisdom are already within each of us, and we embrace those qualities now. We step forward with love and anticipation, standing in the truth of who and what we are, saying yes to our prosperity, harmony, health, order, love, and our amazing expansion in all its forms. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation of consciousness for ourselves and our community. We know that it is done and we give thanks. Now we release, we let go, and we let spirit do its perfect work through us. We trust this universe provides for us. It is done and so it is. And now, just a few important announcements. Remember Father, Th Father Tom's workshop, The Possibility Project, after the service today from 11.30 to 12.30. See you there. Please mark your calendars. Join us in person next Sunday, November 6th, for an inspiring message from Reverend Verona and plan to stay for her always active and meaningful workshops. And you are invited to join Reverend Rona and those in our community after the workshop for lunch at Jan's home in Brentwood. Call Jan for details at 925-813-2111. Remember to bring your recyclables and donations for loaves and fishes next Sunday to our in-person service, November 6th, in the West Island Room of the Antioch Community Center. Celebration of Life for Randy Culler is coming in November. We will celebrate Randy. On Saturday, November 19th, at the West Island Room in the Antioch Community Center. Program begins at 11, and the 360 band with John will begin after the service at 12.30 to 2.15. And remember to spread the word about our incredible center and our voice in the world 
by liking us on our Facebook page, reading our weekly connections, watching and re-watching our Sunday services on our website and on YouTube, and always checking our website for updates on events at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Blessings and gratitude to you all. Thank you, Pat, for covering all those important details and getting us aligned into our abundance. Thank you, thank you, we appreciate you. I'm gonna hand the screen over to John for our final song this morning. Thank you, John. This is a little song that I've always felt was good for reminding us to hold our identity no matter what. It's called, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody. Marching on the freedom land Ain't gonna let my ego Turn me round, turn me round Turn me round Ain't gonna let my ego Turn me round I'm gonna keep on walking Keep on talking Marching on the freedom land What a great way to close us out this morning. Thank you both, John and Pat, for setting the tone for us, laying the foundation, activating the space with all of the love and joy and beauty. We love you. We bless you. Thank you for being with us. I will find you on this side of the screen, <laughs> on the Facebook side of things. Thank you. Thank you. We love and appreciate you. Okay, it is fabulous to have the, the kind, wonderful Father Tom Bonacci here today bringing us the message, who are you? Remember during Tom's talk, you can leave questions and comments in the chat and we will get to them when he completes his uh, talk this morning. And also email me or text me or Facebook message me um, if you want the copies of all the notes from today's talk and the workshop we're going into uh, if you know, and you've been in Tom's workshops and, and talks before, you know his notes are thorough and amazing and uh, definitely worth having. So let me know if you want copies of those. I'll email those right to you and right before the workshop as well. So that way you have them for the workshop. Um, so I'm gonna read you about Father Tom really quick here in case uh, somebody's here that doesn't know Tom yet. Um, it's a good thing you're here because he's a wonderful person to know. Um, Thomas Bonacci is the Interfaith Peace Project's Executive Director. Tom offers friendly and hospitable programs to help participants cope with inherited stereotypes, innocent misunderstandings, embarrassing questions, or general knowledge of the many faith traditions of humankind. 
Tom was ordained in 1972 for the Passionate Religious Order of the Roman Catholic Church and is recognized for his scriptural scholarship. One of Tom's dreams is the interfaith project involving conversations, projects, and experiments exploring the reality and possibility for the practice and study of interfaith spirituality. We love Tom and we are so grateful for your presence here with us. Uh, I'm going to pray us in and then hand the screen over to Tom for our message this morning. Uh, very much looking forward to this. So I invite everyone into this space, take a deep inward breath if that feels good for you. And, um, take a breath of the peace and the harmony of the spirit of the I am that I am so grateful in this moment and thankful that we are able to live a life in alignment with the great power and presence, the abundance and intelligence of the cosmos. We're so grateful to release and open and allow to new awareness of the truth and remembering and claiming our truth as infinite beings, claiming the eternal love and light that we are. And in this sacred moment, we bless Father Tom, grateful for his willingness to share with us in this mission of compassion and love and peace. And we make our minds available and our hearts available to his divine message this morning. I release this word for the benefit of all, knowing that there is one collective mind and in love, for love, and as love, I send this off into the world. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your presence with us. It is all yours, Tom. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Amy. Well, blessings, everyone. It's my blessing and privilege to be with you today. I find this a fascinating topic, this whole idea of identity and who you are and what you want to be and what your potential is. And after 78 years of existence, I can report to you that I have no idea who I am. <laughs> Let me tell you where I'm coming from, is that for the longest time, people have said to me from the time I was a little boy, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I find that a fascinating question. What do I want to be? Of course, the question might really be framed, who do you want to be as opposed to what do you want to be? Of course, the what do you want to be is based on the assumption that you are, you are what you do. So the, the work that you do is obviously the identity that you have. But as I look back over my life, one of the things that I discover is that my desires, the work, so to speak, are manifold. I would not mind taking this journey again in another direction, not because I regret this one, but because I'm curious about what it would be if I developed those other talents or abilities, or in some cases, some of us might even have gifts. So I resist the idea that our identity is like a brick, or that our identity is like an object, or it is a thing that can be analyzed. For example, what is the identity of a cake? So I walk into a bakery and I say, I like a cake. And of course the person will say to me, well, we have all kinds of cake. What kind of cake would you like? Would you like a pineapple upside down cake? Which seems to fit oftentimes the mood that I'm in upside down. Or do I want a birthday cake? Or do I want a wedding cake? So the identity of the cake depends very, very much on the occasion. It can be sad, it can be happy, it can be profound, it can be serious, it can be life-turning. It is interesting how we identify food. We eat food when we're sad, we eat food when we're happy, we eat food when we're hungry, and we eat food when we want to. We eat food because it's nutritious and we really like the food that isn't. 
And so we begin to see that if we label something too strongly or too harshly, we constrict it. Perhaps a profound question might be, who am I today? Or who am I in this moment? As the great wisdom teachers point out, that a human being takes on their identity in direct relationship, perhaps, to another human being. To one person, I'm a son. To another person, I might be a father. To another person, I'm an uncle. To another person, I might be a nephew. People say, but you're still the same person. And my question would be, are you? Are you sure? Are you sure that when you're in the mode of being somebody's baby, that that's the same thing as being somebody's mother? And so that ability to shift the identities, so to speak, or that ability to experience the depth of yourself is what makes this enterprise called light delightful. When an identity lines up with only one identity, or one way of being, or one way of working, it gets too top-heavy. We begin to fall down spiritually and to collapse if we can't breathe. So in putting this little reflection together today, and I'm, I'm very grateful to be here, I had five different thoughts in my head. So I figured, well, I'll do five little vignettes, if you don't mind. Number one, the first thing that I think is really important for me to share with you and also for me to remember is in this enterprise of trying to discover who we are, we also fall into the temptation of thinking we know who somebody else is. That we know them because of the title they have or the status they might have. The person that you meet always escapes the category you put the person in. Therefore, I am inspired by the Rig Vedas of the great Hindu traditions. And I refer particularly to the Rig Vedas, uh, chapter 10, in which we find a great hymn of creation, where it, it speculates on how this vast creation came into existence. And it even has the divine in on the app that the divine did this or the divine did that. And when the hymn comes to its climactic conclusion and said that the divine knows everything. And then the last verse of the hymn says, maybe not. And what's powerful about that is even when I go to discover myself, I have to have a certain sense of humility. I love people who walk around the country and the world today who know everything. Have you ever met anybody who knows everything? Do you remember when you knew everything? Maybe you were 16, 17 years old. You knew everything. And of course, when you know everything, you're open to nothing. You're not even open to the dynamism of yourself. So humility is not a way to put yourself down. It's not the same thing as humiliation. Humility is having the courage to be in touch with your greatness. You're much greater than who you think you are. You're much greater than any container anybody can put you in. So whenever I have an insight into myself or an insight into another person, I hold it with humility. Because while that statement might be true, it does not exhaust the depth and the wonder that is another person. Reflection number two. Let's go over to the Hebrew tradition. Let's go to the Hebrew Bible. Let's go to one of the longest sections in the Hebrew Bible, the Psalms, the 150 Psalms, or in some tradition, the 151 Psalms, 
Or if we pay attention to it, we realize the psalms and songs and canticles and chants exist throughout the entire Hebrew Bible. But there's one in particular that touches me very deeply today in light of our theme this October. In the Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. Can I share that with you? You, O divine, you, O God, you, O cosmos, you, O universe, you, O unknown, form me in my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My very self is known to you. My bones are not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret fashion in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw me unformed. In your book, they are all written down. My days were shaped before one of them came to be. Wonderfully made, you knit me in my mother's womb. I remember as a little boy, my mother was knitting one day. And I said, oh, are we having a baby? Knit, put together, wonderfully made, wondrously made. You know, many of us have encountered or maybe even belong to religious traditions that whenever we gather together, somebody in authority says, now let's call to mind our sins. Let's call to mind the awfulness of the world. Let's call to mind the difficulties of life as if we have to be reminded. In what moment of our lives are we not carrying the tragedy of Ukraine? At what moment in our lives are we not embarrassed and humbled by the people who live in our streets with nowhere to go? At what moment of our life are we not aware of the tensions and the difficulties in our society? If I come together into a spiritual sanctuary, the one thing I need to remember is not my sins. I need to not forget my beauty. That I am wonderfully made. I love to practice that. I walk down the street and I see somebody that other people call blind. And I say, wonderfully made. I see somebody who somebody else calls crippled, and I say, wonderfully made. Otherwise, I judge the book by its cover. I judge by appearances. I think that because someone is troubled in their leg, that they must be crippled in their spirit when they might be delightful in their soul. It's not the job of anybody who practices the spiritual arts to discover what's wonderful about another person or their wonderfulness in being, even if they themselves are not in touch with it. I don't have to remind the sinner of their sin. I have to remind the sinner of their beauty their splendor, wonderfully made. One great tradition of humankind thinks this way. The entire universe has conspired so that you can exist in this moment. Rather than seeing the universe as the backdrop to your insignificance, we can experience the universe as our mother in this moment. I'm humble before the universe. I'm humble before the divine. I'm humble before you. 
because the wonderment that is me unfolds in the context of meeting you. As it says in the great Sufi tradition, I'm a better me because I met you. I have a third reflection. However we understand ourselves, whatever our identity happens to be today, which is like a stepping stone to our magnificence. Once I met a lovely woman, an elderly woman, I said, wow, aren't you magnificent? And she said, well, honey, if you think I'm magnificent today, wait till you see me tomorrow. <laughs> Whenever she came to an understanding of her persona, her identity, it was like climbing a ladder. The best is yet to come. One of the greatest capacities we human beings have is the ability to know and to discover. Which one of us is not mesmerized by the James Webb telescope? Every day I say to the Space Administration, show me more, show me more. When we meet the story of another person, give me another chapter. Let me turn the pages of your heart and discover the wisdom that is you. I love to discover what I don't know because it's an invitation to education, to exploration, to discovery, to delightfulness. Don't you love it when you go to a restaurant and your friend says, taste this, this is delicious. I never tasted this before. And you light up like a Christmas tree. I must order that. We have the capacity to know and to discover. In the Quran, Surah 49, it says, oh, humankind, we created you that you might know one another, that you might discover one another. In another place, it says, we made you differently. We met you deliberately and differently, that you might know one another, discover one another. And dare I say, rejoice in one another. I love it when I hear somebody say, I never looked at it that way before. I love it when I say, I never looked at it that way before. I never discovered it from that point of view. It's amazing when your inside meets the so-called outside, rather than the world being an object it becomes an experience. It so touches our life where the better for it. Which one of you has not seen a beautiful flower and blossomed yourself? Which one of you have not seen a tall tree and climbed it, at least spiritually, psychically, psychologically? I've been to more treetops than I can remember. I have a fourth meditation. It's inspired by the Jesus traditions. Jesus famously said in the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter, belongs to the Beatitudes section, blessed are you. You are the light of the world. Now imagine. Imagine if every day of your life, somebody came into your life and said, you know, you are the light of the world. Really? I forget that sometimes. Sometimes I think my anthem is, hello, darkness, my old friend. And somebody comes into my life and says, you are the light of the world. I am. Let your 
good works shine before all people. In other words, not only do you have the capacity to know something, to discover something, you also have the capacity to do something good, loving, wonderful. Who am I? I am the person who has the ability to love. And I pray for the courage that every day I not simply have the ability, but the courage to love. Sometimes it's in the simplest things, isn't it? It's going to a store to buy something you don't need, and you pass somebody and you say, Hi, how are you today? That's an act of love. I love little kids in shopping carts in the grocery store. They wave to you. You can wave back. The world becomes a better place immediately. They start sharing what they have. No, they don't. They start sharing who they are. Do you ever walk up to a three-year-old who's waving at you and say, well, where do you go to school? What degree do you have? How do you self-identify? Before we have all those other identities, the self can shine. Isn't that really not the quest of life? It's that the self is unfolding. Somebody famously said, we're spiritual beings living a human life. If that's true, and I hold it humbly, maybe I am a spiritual being and my destiny is forever. Why would I lock myself into an identity that holds me back or shuts me down? I want to see whoever I am today as the stepping stone to the greater consciousness. And along the way, I'll discover and I'll know and I'll do good things. I might even love. I might even be loved. Well, my dear friends, that leads me to a fifth conclusion or reflection that can serve the conclusion. And it comes from the Sufi tradition in general and Havis in particular. I'd like to read you the poem. One day the sun admitted. I love it, the sun speaking. Talk about source of light and energy. I'm just a shadow. I wish I could show you the infinite incandescence that has cast my brilliant image. I wish I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness the astonishing light of your own being. I think we need to have the humility to understand that our journeys can only begin, they never end. They reach plateaus. In this little poem, I hear Habib say, the universe wants me to understand and experience the astonishing light that is my being. I thought about this. Almost every tradition I can think of and every tradition I have studied talks about light. As a matter of fact, in some traditions, light and life are interchangeable. And light in our current understanding travels forever. The astonishing light of my own being. Each and every one of us are forever. 
oh, we find ourselves in this place right now, in this configuration. But this is the starting point, a stepping stone, a moment by which we live and perceive that we're on the verge of astonishment. So my dear friends in this sacred community, be aware of my love and respect. Thank you for all the times you let your light shine. Thank you for all the times you encouraged other people's light to shine as well. And may we continue this amazing journey together as we discover not only what we can be, but who we are. And that's a mystery that unfolds in ways that are amazing and astonishing. Be blessed. Love you. Oh, we love you, Tom. Thank you. That is the mystery that unfolds. Wise words of wisdom. Okay, everybody. Wow. That was rich. And um, hopefully everybody saw the, the different um, quotes, psalms, uh, scriptures that I dropped in the feed so you can follow along with that. Um, David Miller says, at this moment, I am fulfilled. Yay. Wow. So much to take in there. I love that about the light. You know, light travels forever. The universe wants me to understand and experience the astonishing light of my being. And light travels forever. Isn't that beautiful? You're, you're just so poetic, Tom. Everything that comes out of you is, <laughs> is poetic and beautiful. Um, wow. <laughs> I liked when you said, sometimes we feel like we want to say, hello, darkness, my old friend, <laughs> but you are the light of the world. And I, I appreciate um, that you said, you know, I am the person who has the ability and courage to love because sometimes it is courageous to love, isn't it? And make that choice. Um, and I love about the children because isn't that the truth? they just share who they are they just show up they just show up here i am in all my my splendor and and they're not thinking about the masks and the costumes you know that pat talked about and and what they're gonna you know they don't have any of that they're just they're just essence that well sometimes you see them you know they'll, they'll be hiding <laughs> and then you'll see the eye come out like this. Yeah. And, and that's the courage. Mm. Yeah. You know, we think it's cute, and it is. It's sweet and it's cute, but it's imagine if all of us could do that, if we could mm. come out from behind our facades yeah. or what we think is our identity and be our true selves and. Mm, yeah, to um, experience the astonishing light that we are. Wow. Okay, let's check in. Anybody have any questions, comments? Anything you would like to add? Um, Pat says, Reverend Tom, I missed number four. Number four was, was that Matthew? Yes, that was Matthew 5. Let you, you are the light of the world. You're the light Let your light world. shine. Let your light shine. City built on a hill cannot be hid. Um, Pat, I did drop that in the feed. But I will The capacity to do good. Mm. Yes. So I'll go ahead and send this to you, Pat, so you have the copy of the, the notes. Linda says, beautiful message this morning, Father Bonacci. Very inspiring and true. Indeed. Yeah, remember anybody else that wants the notes, just let me know and I will send them your way. My email is amy at brentwoodilc.org and I will get those right to you. Also, if you're going to pop on the workshop with us now, let me know because there are uh, there are notes for that too and you'll want to have those. Any other comments today about what we talked about here? I, I really, I, I I always love what you bring to us, Tom. It's so rich. It's, it's so potent. Thank and you. 
I'm so grateful for your message uh, this morning. I know that everybody feels the same. So we have um, we have 30 minutes before our workshop. So I um, invite everybody to get a snack, refresh, hydrate, and get yourself in a space where you're not going to be interrupted so we can dive into this dialogue about the possibility project. Um, Tom's workshops uh, are always full. What did David say? He's fulfilled. We leave fulfilled. Trust me. Uh, join us there. The, the link is on our homepage, brentwoodilc.org, and I'm going to drop it here right in the feed when we conclude. Ah, so I can't wait for that. Everybody gear up for that. Um, and in life, we get to decide how we create flow in our lives and how we participate in energetic exchanges of giving and receiving. Um, so if you feel on the receiving end of inspiration, restoration, uh, peace, um, a message of beauty and love and joy, please consider, consider visiting our giving page on our website. Uh, BrentwoodILC.org. Uh, we know that what we appreciate appreciates and um, our center is 100% supported by your generous contributions. And we thank you so much for sharing those with us because it gets it creates the opportunity for us to continue sharing the love out there. So thank you. Thank you. We are going to close with the uh, prayer of divine awakening. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I think somebody was sharing something here, but I'm not sure that it went through maybe a poem. We'll, we'll check in with that later. Thank you everybody for joining us. Let me pull up our prayer of divine awakening on the uh, screen. Um, I think it's Jan who's saying, Tom, you're such an inspiration for all of us. Yes, indeed, that is truth right there. <laughs> truth we claim. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and bring up our prayer of divine awakening and invite you to speak this out, claim this for your life every day. If you don't have a card we sent out last year, this is, is on a, um, like a hard stock, hard, card stock, hard note card. And uh, if you don't have one, let me know because I have them and I will send one to you. The prayer of divine awakening. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes, an open heart, an expansive mind. I choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy, divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely. I move forward in a state of appreciation, an extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is. Shine on bright lights in the world. Love, blessings, all the good stuff. We will see you on the workshop in just a little while. So I'll see you there. Thank you, Tom. We're so grateful for you. Blessings, blessings. Bye, everybody. Remember, next week's an in-person service. So yay, but we'll still be online. We'll still be online. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Love you all. <laughs>